Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Science, and today I want to talk about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle is one of the most famous results of quantum mechanics. It has captivated the imagination of generations of scientists and non-scientists alike. However, the principle is very frequently misunderstood and misrepresented. In this video we'll discuss what the uncertainty principle really tells us about quantum states. There is a companion video that provides a mathematical proof of the principle, so I also encourage you to check it out. Let's go! Before we can understand uncertainty principles in quantum mechanics, we need a quick refresher about some of the important ingredients making up these uncertainty principles. Let's consider a system in a state psi. This state contains all the information about our quantum system. However, when we want to extract this information, we need to write down this state in some basis or representation. The usual way in which we build a basis is by considering a Hermitian operator, say A, and Hermitian operators allow us to describe physical quantities, so you can think of A as, for example, the position or the energy of a particle. The key equation to consider is the eigenvalue equation of A. Where as usual, lambda n are the eigenvalues and un the eigenstates. These eigenstates form a basis of state space, so we can expand this state psi in this basis. And the expansion coefficient c are the bracket between un and psi. These expansion coefficients provide the representation of the state psi in the u basis of eigenstates of A. But in general, there is nothing special about operator A. We can define a second Hermitian operator B that corresponds to some other physical property. We can also write the eigenvalue equation of operator B, where now the eigenvalues are mu m and the eigenstates are vm. The vm eigenstates also form a basis of state space, so we can also expand the same state psi in this new basis. And now the expansion coefficients d are the brackets between vm and psi. These expansion coefficients provide a representation of the state psi in the v basis of eigenstates of b. So here we're always working with the same state psi of the system. These two different representations are simply two different ways of writing the same state. We could solve any quantum problem in terms of either, and the physics wouldn't change. Moving forward, I'll assume that you're comfortable with these concepts, but if they are new to you, then you should first check out the video on representations. What we'll learn in this video is that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is a mathematical relation between the C coefficients and the D coefficients that we can use to write the same quantum state psi. Let's continue with some refreshers. We consider again the expansion of state psi in the U basis of eigenstates of some operator A. To help in our discussion, we're now going to represent the state psi in the U basis in a pictorial manner. Consider a pair of axes. On the horizontal axis, we're going to place the eigenvalues of the operator A. And on the vertical axis, we're going to place the absolute value squared of Cn. We use the absolute value squared of Cn rather than Cn directly because we know from the videos on measurements that this square is related to the probability of getting a particular eigenvalue when we measure property A. So let's pick some values of these C squared coefficients, starting with C1 squared for the first eigenvalue, and then similarly for the other eigenvalues. Here I'm just making them up, but in reality we would determine them from this expression. As we discussed in the videos on measurements, we can interpret a diagram like this as a probability distribution. What's important for this video is that this diagram provides a pictorial way of characterizing a state psi of the system when we write it in the basis determined by the operator A. And we actually need a final refresher before we can discuss uncertainty principles, which is the idea of a root mean square deviation. We again start with the state psi in the u basis with the usual expansion coefficient c. Let's draw a pair of axes again with the corresponding labels. I again draw a pictorial representation of the state psi, and this time I am conveniently drawing it with a peak around some particular eigenvalue lambda m. The root mean square deviation is a quantity that allows us to characterize probability distributions such as this one. The root mean square deviation of A in state psi is called delta A, and it is defined as the square root of the expectation value of sigma A squared, where sigma A is equal to A minus the expectation value of A. Delta A can also be rewritten like this. 
So what does the root mean square deviation tell us? Mathematically, sigma a is measuring the distance from the mean of the distribution. So delta a is a measure of the width of this distribution. Again, I will assume that you're comfortable with these concepts. If they sound new to you, then you can find all the details in the video on expectation values linked in the description. We're now finally ready to introduce the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The setup is as following. We have a state psi and two operators. The first is A with its eigenvalue equation and the second is B with its own eigenvalue equation. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle tells us that the root mean square deviation of A multiplied by the root mean square deviation of B is larger than or equal to one half times the absolute value of the expectation value of the commutator of A and B. Okay, so this is a bit of a mouthful, but in the rest of the video we'll explore what the principle means from a conceptual point of view. For the mathematical proof of this result, you should check out the companion video on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which you can find linked in the description. A quick aside before you continue. If you have encountered the Heisenberg uncertainty principle before, it'll probably have been in terms of a particular example, where the observables are position and momentum, and then it takes this form. But the relation is actually general for any two observables A and B, so we'll focus on the most general form today. So what does the Heisenberg uncertainty principle mean? Let's start with the case when A and B don't commute. This means that the right hand side here is larger than zero, so that the product of delta A and delta B is strictly larger than zero. We first consider our system in some state psi. Working with our pictorial representation again, we now need to consider two pairs of axes. In the first, we're going to represent the state psi in the basis of eigenstates of A. And remember that in this case, the eigenvalues are labeled by lambda and the expansion coefficients by C. In the second, we represent the state in terms of the eigenstates of B, whose eigenvalues are mu, and the corresponding expansion coefficients are D. Starting with the A basis, imagine that for this particular state psi, the distribution is centered around a particular eigenvalue, lambda n. If we consider the same state psi in terms of the eigenstate of B, we get these other distributions centered about some eigenvalue, mu m. These two distributions represent the same state psi in two different bases. What the uncertainty principle tells us is that they are not completely independent. If we consider the root mean square deviation of the first one and the root mean square deviation of the second one, then by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, their product must be larger than some lower bound. And as A and B don't commute in this example, this lower bound is a positive number. To see this more clearly, imagine that we have a second state, psi prime. We also consider our two pairs of axes, starting with the bases associated with A we have the eigenvalues lambda, and now the expansion coefficients are c prime. And for the bases associated with b, we have mu and d prime. For this new state psi prime, imagine that the representation in the a basis is also centered around lambda n, but it is much narrower than for the state psi we had earlier. This means that delta a for this new state psi prime is very small. As the Heisenberg uncertainty principle still needs to be obeyed, if delta A is very small, then unless delta B is relatively large, their product will not be above the lower bound set by their commutator. This means that having a very small delta A forces us to have a relatively broad distribution when we write psi prime in terms of the B basis. And we need this to ensure that delta B is large enough to obey the uncertainty principle. Overall, what this means is that the representations of a given state in two different bases given by two non-commuting operators are inversely related. The narrower the distribution is for one operator, the wider it needs to be for the other, and vice versa. All of this to ensure that the product of their root mean square deviations is larger than the lower bound set by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So as claimed at the very beginning of the video, the uncertainty principle allows us to relate the C and the d expansion coefficients of a given state. The case when a and b commute is not so interesting. 
In this case, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle still holds, but all it says now is that delta A times delta B must be large or equal to zero. So in this case, even if we make delta A very small, we're not forced to make delta B large because their product can be as small as we want. In particular, there are states with delta A and delta B arbitrarily small at the same time. If you remember from the video on compatible observables, this actually makes sense, because two operators that commute can be simultaneously diagonalized, which means that we can have states that are eigenstates of both operators at the same time. So in this case for operator A, and simultaneously for operator B, where the common eigenstates are labeled by the corresponding eigenvalues. We also know that the root mean square deviation calculated for an eigenstate of the operator vanishes. So this means that if the state of our system is one of the common eigenstates of A and B, then delta A is zero, and delta B is also zero. This result is still consistent with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, because the lower bound of the product of delta A and delta B is zero for commuting observables. We can also reverse the argument. If A and B don't commute, then you can view the Heisenberg uncertainty principle as a restatement of the fact that the two operators cannot be diagonalized simultaneously, because that would imply that we could have both delta A and delta B be zero. But it is impossible if the lower bound of the uncertainty principle isn't zero. So now that we understand what the uncertainty principle means, a question that you may have at this point is why do we call this relation an uncertainty principle? The name uncertainty principle is in fact rather unfortunate, because it can be, and it has been, the source of misrepresentation and misunderstanding of what the principle really means. If we work again with our state psi, and we start with the basis of eigenstates of A, then let's consider again our pictorial representation. I have again chosen a distribution that is strongly picked near a particular eigenvalue lambda n. What this means is that the expansion of the state psi in the u basis is dominated by the un term associated with eigenvalue lambda n, which in turn means that cn is approximately equal to 1, while all other expansion coefficients are close to 0. From the videos on measurements, we know that the probability of obtaining a particular eigenvalue as the outcome of measuring a in state psi is given by the absolute value squared of the corresponding c expansion coefficient. In this example, we would have that p lambda n is close to 1, because cn is the dominant term in the expansion and is therefore close to 1 itself. In turn, this means that if we were to measure a in state psi, then we would almost certainly get lambda n as the outcome of the measurement. So in this particular state psi, we can predict with high confidence the result of a quantum measurement before we perform it. When this happens, we sometimes say that the property a has a definite value in state psi. Now let's repeat the analysis for the same state psi, but now in the basis of eigenstate of a different operator b, whose corresponding pictorial representation is based on these axes. As we discussed a moment ago, if a and b don't commute, then the uncertainty principle forces the pictorial representation of psi in this second case to be very broad and it is to ensure that delta b is large enough to obey the uncertainty principle. In this case, the expansion of psi contains many non-zero terms, so all the dm are of comparable size. And this in turn means that all the p mu m are also comparable. So if we think about measurements again, this means that if we were to measure property b in state psi, then because the different probabilities are all comparable, we cannot predict at all what the result of that one measurement of b will be. It could give any value. So given this discussion, where does the word uncertainty come in? In the first case, where we work in the eigenbasis of operator A, we can predict what the result of the measurement will be before we do the measurement, because this probability is almost 1. This means that we can say that property A has almost a definite value. And this means that there is very little uncertainty on the value of a even before we do the measurement. By contrast, in the case of property b, we have no idea what the outcome of the measurement will be before we perform it, and that's because all probabilities are comparable. 
So now we can say that there is a high degree of uncertainty in the value of property B in state psi. So it is from this use of the word uncertainty that we get to the name uncertainty principle for this relation up here. Having said this, it is very important that we don't misunderstand the word uncertainty. It does not mean that we don't know something about our system because we haven't been able to characterize it fully because of some limitation of our measurement apparatus. We do know absolutely everything there is to know about the quantum system, and it is all described by this state psi. What the uncertainty principle does is it relates different ways of representing the same state psi. Before we finish, it is worth relating our discussion to the more familiar uncertainty principle between position and momentum operators. These operators obey the canonical commutation relation, and substituting it into the general form up here, we get this, which in turn gives the usual expression that delta x delta p is larger than or equal to one half h bar. Position and momentum are continuous variables. So when we write the state psi in the position basis, we have this expression in terms of an integral rather than a sum. In this case, we typically call the expansion coefficients psi of x, and they are given by the usual bracket. This psi of x is of course what we call the wave function in quantum mechanics. We have a similar expansion in the momentum basis, where the representation is now in terms of so-called momentum wave functions psi bar of p. So what does the uncertainty principle look like in this case? Let's draw the axis for the position operator. Now the eigenvalues are the continuous variable x, and the vertical axis is the absolute value of the wave function squared. And we also have the corresponding setup for the momentum operator. What the uncertainty principle tells us is that if we have a very narrow wave function in the position representation, then the corresponding wave function in the momentum representation will be very broad. Of course, the opposite holds. If we have a wave function that is very narrow in the momentum representation, then it will be very broad in the position representation. All of this is to ensure that the product delta x delta p is larger than a half h bar. More generally, we know from the video on wave functions that these two representations are related by a Fourier transform. If you are familiar with Fourier transforms, you will now immediately see that the Fourier transform already encodes the uncertainty principle. If you have a very narrow function and calculate its Fourier transform, then you end up with a very broad function, and vice versa, perfectly consistent with the uncertainty principle. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle allows us to relate representations of quantum states written down in terms of the eigenstates of different operators, and it becomes particularly exciting when these two operators don't commute. Although the most famous example corresponds to the uncertainty between position and momentum, we've learned that the principle is much more general and it relates any two operators. And remember that in this video we've only discussed what the uncertainty principle tells us, but we haven't proven that it is true. For the full mathematical derivation of the principle, don't forget to check out the companion video. And as always, if you liked the video, please subscribe.